Hi everyone and welcome back to this brand new video from Make Print Repeat. Today we will be working on the Hidden Keys project part 2. So where did we left off? The design was finished, the PCB was ready and we just had to print the parts, assemble and write the code. For this project to succeed we needed to complete the 3D design the PCB and the code and in this project we will finish ev ev everything and now le let's start with the unboxing of the parts from PCBWay thanks to PCBWay for making this project possible by sending the parts ne needed to make the project work These are the nylon gears printed with SLS technology and these gears allow everything to work. It, it would have, have, have been very difficult to print them on a normal FDM machine. And then they also pro, pro, provided some CNC parts which will be used as a keychain. The parts for the projects are one large 12 volt motor and two smaller 12 volt motors and Arduino Nano, some electronic components, and then the gears. As you can see, the print quality of these gears are absolutely amazing and their res resistance is also very good. And the surface finish on the ma machined part is just great. Now let's, let's see the two layer PCB. This PCB is used to control all of, 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 of the electrical co components like the co connectors, the Arduino Nano, the MOSFETs, the relays and everything else. And now let's start sol soldering the parts on the PCB. We set the soldering iron to 350 deg deg degrees and we just need to start soldering. But before we can in install the threaded inserts in the printed parts. After some trial and error we positioned all of the parts on the PCB and we can start soldering them. Sometimes soldering the small co co components is not e easy, but it's a good practice for anyone who wants to do m more electrical projects. As you can see, everything fits perfectly in their slots. So the design was well made in KiteHard. I'll always rem remember to wear a mask when soldering. Now we just need to install the gears on the motors. And in this case, the ones for the smaller mod motors are pressure fit, while the one for the larger mo motor is installed with a screw. For the printed parts, I started by searching a vise that could hold the PCB. And this vise can be used for many things. 
and then I started to slice every part of the design. The larger parts almost took 18 hours each to print, while the smaller ones could be printed in one go on the Prusa MK3. And now I'll leave you to the print time lapses. But be, be, before that, I decided to change the n n n nozzle from a 0.4 millimeter to a 0.6 millimeter on the Prusa to make the printing much faster. As you can see the print quality is great and the parts usually printed in a small amount of time. And then I decided to slice some other parts to be printed on the Xbox 3D printer due to its also fast ability to print. As you can see also the print quality here it's flawless. And thanks to the ball screws it usually avoids all of the data bending issues that are present on normal printers. And after some underparts that were printed on the Prusa, like the fingerprint holder and some functional parts, the only parts le left were from the structure, which were printed on the Artillery X1 due to its large build volume. The assembly of the parts was pretty straightforward due to, to the design which integrated some spots for some screws to be screwed in. And then the main part which needed to be assembled was the 
housing for the screw, for the switches. And as you can see here with a single switch, with a single screw, you are able to hold the, the switches in place. And then we had to in install the fingerprint sensor and then pass the cables through the channel which com communicated with the main housing. Then the PCB could be screwed in with some M3 screws and then I just had to solder all of the wires and then install them back and co co connect them to the PCB. The code was probably the hardest part of the project since to integrate many fin fin features I had to go back to the drawing to, to see which pins were as assigned to which part parts and also due to the use of libraries for the fingerprint sensor. However, in the end it seemed to, to work and I also tried to, to, to use a motor shield from Arduino as a backup as, as you can see here. And as, as you can see from here, when you press one of, 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 of the buttons, the sort of motor works. And now the final overview. As you can see, all of the parts were assembled and they were all fun fun functioning. I used hot glue to this secure the motors for the ease of assembly and disassembly later. And this was the final look for the top. As you can see, it's hard to tell that, that, that there are some hidden slots for the keys. And then the, the seams are almost non-visible. And now the last step of this project was just to install the compound, the logo on the wall. And this was done with a simple screw. And after that, the project was finished. For the testing, I used a momentary source of power. However, later I would have included a battery or a hole directly to the inside of the room for power. And now you can see that if you press the two right buttons, the opening for the fingerprint will open and then when pressing the fingerprint, the key will fall out. And then after some time, the slot for the fingerprint will close and then you can enter in, in, inside the room with the key.